Hello brothers and sisters of Christ, summer is upon us. It is hot outside. Um, I'm working hard on the property trying to get everything done this month. Uh, all the major stuff that I have to get done. I had to redo the chicken coop. I did the garden. Um, we did the whole inside of the house. Um, cleaning, like doing that hardcore clean where you're scrubbing everything, the floors, the walls, um, dusting and whatnot. Um, and then I've got paths that I'm working on right now to my cistern that's down the hillside uh, where I get my water. So I gotta get, there's a path that goes down that's kind of really steep and then there's a side path that's longer that goes up and around so it's not as steep. So I have to have two paths like a backup emergency path. So I've been doing a lot of outdoor work uh, lately so please pray for me with that because I'm it's hard work. It's one thing to work on flat land. It's another thing to be working on a hillside. So that's what I've been doing lately. Now I wanted to get back into words to no profit because there's a lot of different... I have a whole thing, list of things to, to do and I'm putting, trying to put them into Bible study form. So words to no profit. I want to talk about the word Bible. There's this new... It just... Just recently, like, in the, like this year, uh, there's come up this big argument over whether we're allowed to use the word Bible. Right? Not just Bible, but King James Bible, uh, authorized version, because now it's like we only want to use what's in the Holy Scriptures. But let's get into this. All right? well, I want to say this real quick, because I, I don't want to get into it. There's uh, words to no profit. There's things worth fighting for, and we're going to show you something worth fighting for. That's what, what's going to make this study a long study, not necessarily just what the word Bible is. We're going to get through that real quick, why it's okay to use the word Bible. And you don't have to go Bible unless you're talking about perversions. But if you're talking about the King James Bible, the authorized version, God's perfect written word in English, you don't have to be doing this. Okay. There's nothing wrong with saying King James Bible, or Holy Bible, though with Holy Bible you'll want to say which is the real Holy Bible because of so many counterfeits. Okay, and I'm going to show you some things here that say they're King James, but they're actually a counterfeit, even though they say King James. Also, it's, it mentions the authorized version, but it's a counterfeit. So it can say authorized version and still be a counterfeit. It can say King James and it can still be a counterfeit. You say the Holy Bible and still be a counterfeit, okay? And we're going to talk about some of these things. I mean, I understand that for the most part, if you keep reading it, though, they'll slip up and say something that you realize that it isn't the authorized version. That's what I mean by counterfeit. They'll try to use the term authorized version, and they'll misuse it. They'll try to misuse Holy Bible. They'll try to misuse um, the, uh, the Holy Bible, the King James Bible. The King James Okay. So when you do, I, I like saying the King James Bible. God's perfect written word for the English speaking people. Where do you find the Holy Scriptures, the word of God in the King James Bible? Or authorized version. There's nothing wrong with saying any of those. Okay. It is location, location, location. I just gave that up when I said the King James Bible is God's perfect word for the English-speaking people. Where do I find God's perfect word? The King James Bible is not... We're not saying that the King James Bible is in the Holy Scriptures. We're not saying the Bible is in the Holy Scriptures, the word Bible. We're not saying the word authorized version is in the Holy Scriptures. We're saying that it's a location. This book right here is where you're going to find God's perfect written word. This, you're not going to find it. This, you're not going to find it. This is God's perfect written word. It's the oldest King James Bible I've found. I'm going to look at something here. Okay. It is location, location, location. And that should end it right there, okay? Why are brethren fighting over it? Once again, it's words to no profit. They're straining at a gnat, okay? Swallowing a camel and straining at a gnat. It's like we're desperate to have things to fight for. And I'm going to show you something that's worth fighting for. There's a lot of things worth fighting for over the word Bible. 
Okay. And please, for some of the brethren out there that are getting tra getting drawn into this, I pray you don't have you're not thin skinned and thinking I'm attacking you. I'm not. I love you, brothers and sisters of Christ. But we need to get back to what's worth fighting for. It's not the word Bible. Bible's a location. It's where you find the Holy Scriptures. I have never, I'll say this again, I have never once said that the word Bible is in the Holy Scriptures. It's where you find the Holy Scriptures today. Okay? Um, I have books over there. I got books over there on, um, was it, uh, Foxfire series, uh, stuff on how to metalworking. But it's not the Bible. So it's not that book. This is the book. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's above all books. Those books, I got some books that are on uh, cooking. But it's not the book above all books. That's what Bible means. I'm getting ahead of myself. But Bible is location, location, location. Okay? It is where to find God's perfect written word today, the Holy Scriptures in English. And the biggest of fight right now is saying, but, 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 Bible's not in the Holy Scriptures. I know that. I remember telling you one time I had someone that attacked me for saying Bible and saying Bible, and, and you hear me say, Bible's not in the Bible. And I turned and opened it up. I got it saved right here. I opened it up and said, are you sure about that? I can't really show it to you, but it's right. it says right there, the Bible. I don't know about your book, but my book, the Bible, is in the Bible. Oh, you mean the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. You're absolutely right. The word Bible is not in the Holy Scriptures. You'll never find the word Bible in the Holy Scriptures, but you will find the Holy Scriptures in the Bible. Yeah. King James is not in the Holy Scriptures. They'll argue that. But if you're going to be true to God's Word, to, to, uh, true to your Word, you would only use Holy Scripture or Scriptures or the Word of God. Yet some of the brethren that are getting drawn into this, notice I said brethren, this isn't an attack on anybody, it's a correction. They get drawn in on this. They will say, I, I don't like using the word Bible or King James. I'm just going to say authorized version. Yet the word authorized version is not in the Holy Scriptures. But that's where you find the Holy Scriptures and the authorized version, King James Bible. And remember, authorized version. And who authorized it? God did through King James, King James. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So when you're saying King James, you're also saying authorized version. God authorized it through a king. Remember what the Bible said about Nebuchadnezzar, my servant? People always say, King James was this, or King James, that doesn't matter. Look at Nebuchadnezzar, how evil and wicked he was. He was a pagan. He th tried to lift himself up as a god. But he ended up having to submit himself to the God, capital G God, Most High. But he was still a servant to God. He used him. Okay, so don't the argument about who G King James was isn't an argument. God used him. It's that simple. Now once again I like to put out location, location, location. They're directions. Okay. Um, I'll try to look at some of these Bibles. I don't have a camera, so I can't show it up close, so I'm just going to read it to you, and I pray that you trust me. Uh, this is what it says in here, okay? I got I went down to the bookstore a week ago, the used bookstore that's in Gold Beach, and I got excited, and I'm like, oh, I got found two more books to add to my collection. I kind of went over them way too quick because there were so many books to try to look at, and I didn't want to be there for hours and hours. So I kind of glanced at them, and you would see certain things that say, hey, these are good, great books. This is the book. Okay. Bible. I'll get ahead of myself. Bible equals the book. The, uh, the, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary says, Bible, the book, by way of eminence, the sacred volume in which are contained the revelation of God, the principles of Christian faith, and the rules of practice. It consists of two parts called the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. To me, Bible 
equals the book above all books. If you just say the book, which one? Like I said, look at these books. They all kind of are black. They're different shapes but and sizes, but I mean, but they're all black. If I said the book, could you grab me the book? It's a specific book. Okay? That's what Bible means. But if I say grab grab me that book, you're gonna be wondering, well, which book is he talking about? But if I say grab for me the King James Bible authorized version, you're gonna grab that one or that one. Any one of them do, but let's pretend like this wasn't here, it's just these three. You give me the King James Bible. It's specific, okay? It's not just any book, it's the book. Okay? It's the book above all books, collection of books in one. If you type in book, that word is in the Holy Scriptures. Now we needed a word that would separate God's word in a book from all other books out there written by men, men inspired. I understand men wrote this, but they were godly inspired, Holy Spirit inspired, okay? But we needed to have a, a, a title for a book that sets it apart from all books, the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I got ahead of myself a little bit. Now we get back to the story. I went to the bookstore, I got this, and I read it. It said, Holy Bible. And down here, now that I look closer, it says American Standard Revision, but you really, I mean, it's all rubbed out and you can hardly even see the indention. So when I was first reading it, because it's an old book, I like old books as far as the smell of the pages and everything. But I opened it up and it says, The Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testament translated out of the original tongues. What does that sound like? Well, King James Bible. The Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testament translated out of the original tongues. See how it lines up so far? Being the version set forth A.D. 1611. That's what I read. Being forth set first 1611. And I'm like, okay, okay, it's a Bible. It's a King James Bible. I'll grab it, take it home, and we will verify it even more when I get back here. Because I still verify them. Even if they say King James, I've learned to verify them because sometimes they've got satanic drawings in it. Sometimes the... Um, they have a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, expository writings in it from so-and-so who just messes up the Bible. And if it's just so messed up, I don't want to hear confusing me or anybody else. All right? So I still bring it home to check it out and verify it. But here it says, translated out of the original tongues, the real King James Bible, and with the former translations diligently compared and revised by His Majesty's special command, appointed to be read in churches, the text conformal to that of the edition of the 1611, commonly known as the Authorized or King James Bible. That's what it says in my King James Bible. Right. Here it says, being the version set forth AD 1611. That's where I stopped. I'm like, okay, that's got to be good. And I stopped. Compared with the most ancient authorities, the most ancient authorities, people with greater authority than Jesus Christ, than the apostles, than the people that wrote it, we have greater authorities than the people that actually wrote, you know, that were godly inspired. God used men to write this book. No, no, no. Most ancient authorities and revised A.D. 1881 to 1885. Newly united by the American Revision Committee, A.D. 1901. Standard edition. Then you read, it says Thomas Nelson. That should be a big flag right there. Thomas Nelson. But what I do with most Bibles is I have certain verses that I'll go to. And the number one verse I always go to because it seems to be evident that they always screw this up in all the Bible perversions is 2 Timothy 2.15. Now we know that 2 Timothy 2.15 says, in the King James Bible, the authorized version, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. They, all the Bible perversions, take out rightly dividing because they hate it. And some will try to deceive you by taking the old Bibles. What they did was, is, I'll go through this real quick. What they did was, is rightly divide, they left it up in the text, and in the bottom they'll say, or it could be such and such. 
And then over time, they swamped it out. And they put some, what their or such and such up in the, in the text. And then when you see the number, it says, see the footnotes. You go down the footnotes, and it'll say, or rightly divide. And that's what we're going to read here. Or rightly divide. And then over time, they just drop the footnote. Rightly divide just disappears. That's how they deceive you. That's their ultimate deception. I said this about Godhead versus the Trinity. It was always Godhead, 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 not Trinity. Then someone came along, Catholic Church, Catholicism, and came out with Trinity. And then it was Godhead, or also known as the Trinity, or also called Trinity. Then they flip them around and just said Trinity, oh, also known as the Godhead. And then after a while, they dropped Godhead. And now they go with his Trinity. As a false convert in these battle buildings, I heard the word Trinity and what they said the Trinity was, but I had no clue what Godhead was. Not a single clue. A, I didn't have God's perfect written word when I was lost, professing to be saved. And that battle building had no clue who God was either. But let's read it here. 2 Timothy 2.15 In the Bible perversion, Give diligence to present thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling aright the word of truth. Not rightly dividing, just handling it correctly. Okay. And you go down to the footnote, it says, Or holding a straight course in the word of truth, or rightly dividing the word of truth. See, it got the true reading, rightly dividing, got bumped down to the bottom. But like I said, when I read that, I was like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a King James. And then I started reading the front page again. Oh, it's revised. Then I looked at, looked at it some more. It's like, oh, you can see something. God showed me. I said, what's that right there? American Revised, Revised Standard Version. Now, this says Holy Bible, but it's not a Holy Bible. Okay, it's a corrupt Bible. Or not, not even a Bible. It's, it's a corrupt book. It's a book. Remember, Bible means the book. It's not a Bible. It's a corrupt counterfeit trying to disguise itself as a Bible. It's completely corrupt. Okay. Didn't mean to pull that out, but we did. Oh, Brother in Christ gave me these bookmarks. Thank you, thank you, Brother in Christ. Uh, brother and Sister in Christ. This book, okay, this says Holy Bible, and when you read it, it says, uh, uh, version set forth on A.D. 1611. Usually when you see A.D. 1611, you think authorized version. Oh, this is an authorized version. Just because it says A.D. 1611 doesn't mean it's not the actual authorized version. Okay. This book here I got and thought, wow, I'm going to have another book. Because this one actually says the children's King James Bible. There's, Brothers of Christ, there's no such thing as fast food Christianity. If it says it, it's got to be it. And I'm just going to take it for its word. There's no such thing as fast food Christianity. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But you've got to study to make sure you have the word of truth. I've done the Bible version issue. I've studied this book. I've read this book through. From Genesis 1.1, clear through Revelation to the end, new heavens and the new earth. Okay. I've studied the Bible version issue. This book changed my life. There's not one error in this book. I've done this study. So when you come across a book that claims to be the same thing, you've got to say, well, I need to look into it. I need to study this to see if this is true. Now, the first giveaway that should have given it away, but I was too fast. Once again, I just saw the Children's King James Bible, New Testament. Children's King James Bible, New Testament. There's a little drawing on the front here. But down here it says Nelson, or Harper. Harper Collins and then Nelson something. And they both combined and became Nelson and Sons, I think it is, and Harper Collins combined to start putting out Bible translation uh, perversions. But here's the thing, copyright 1960 by Modern Bible Translations Incorporated. If it's a King James Bible, why does it say Modern Bible Translations? That's a red flag. But it says King James. This one over here was promoting that it's like the, it's like the authorized version. But first it made me think it is the authorized version, but it ain't. The Children's King James Bible, New Testament, and it shows Jay Green is responsible for the wording because there's a lot of commentary in here that I don't agree with. P. 
Peter Palmer is responsible for the stories. Manning D. V. Lee is responsible for the illustration. But here's what I highlighted here. Modern Bible Translation Incorporated. It's a red flag to me. Even though it says King James Bible, why are you part of the modern translations? There are by, uh, church, local church Bible publishers that are about the King James Bible. They have nothing to do with the Bible perversions. Right? When you open it up to the preface, right, it says, this Bible, in, or this Bible in children's language is dedicated to every young man and young lady in the world. So what is it saying? It's saying that uh, in this Bible, the children's language, children's language, so instead of bringing uh, your children up to understanding the King James Bible as it is and how it's supposed to be, we have to dumb it down. But we're, but, but we're still going to call it a King James Bible. We're still going to call it a King James. But we're going to dumb it down. These are red flags. And like I said, when it comes to pictures, I really don't like pictures. And I'll, uh, this is why. Right here, uh, when you have the angel that's talking to the shepherds when Jesus is born, they show the angel there with wings. Huge wings. I don't know if you can really see it, but huge wings. And you're like, that's not that big. Yeah, it is a big deal. Okay, You know who has wings and transforms himself into an angel of light? Satan. Satan is a fallen cherub. A cherub has wings. And what does Satan do? He transforms himself into an angel of light. And when they try to promote this to kids, that, hey, this is just a regular, all angels are like this. Satan can come walking in and deceive them like that. Angels don't have wings. Cherubim do. And when you try to do wings on an angel, what you're really doing is saying, here is Satan coming to tell them about Jesus. No, that's not what happened in the Bible. The other thing I don't like is, here it says, the spirit coming down like a dove. They'll say like a dove, but when you draw a picture, that's not like a dove. A, the spirit coming down like a dove, that's an actual dove coming down. It's an actual dove. So a kid looks at this and goes, that's the Holy Spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's an antichrist spirit. It's paganism. Mm -hmm. And remember our teaching. Who was the only one that saw the, the, the Holy Spirit come down like a, as a dove and land on Jesus Christ when he was baptized, after he was baptized? Who was it? John the Baptist. It was a sign given to him for him. He was the one that saw it. He was the only one that saw it. Okay. And I told you that the Holy Spirit... The Spirit of God manifests, up, manifests itself, we did another study, three different ways. Uh, fire, clouds, and light. Okay. Those are the three different ways. So I believe a, a cloud, John could see a form of a cloud, that as it came down, it made the movement like a dove. When a dove goes to land, but it was a cloud. Okay. It was the Holy Spirit in the form of a cloud. And the reason we did that study, remember the tent, uh, the, te the tabernacle, um, the pillar of cloud was on it by day, saying that God, Spirit, and God was in the tabernacle, and a pillar of fire at night. You have the tree, the burning bush. Okay, Jesus is the light of the world. The Holy Spirit is in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be in us, shining to the world. Okay. But you see this stuff, these drawings, and it's like, they, they automatically start putting images in the in kids' uh, minds. Now, the thing that I didn't like about this, is you, you might say, well, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. Okay, we're going to read 2 Timothy 2.15 from here. If we can find it. Here it is. Remember, 2 Timothy 2.15 from here is, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now look at this one. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you say, well, it has rightly dividing in there. Yeah, they changed a little bit to make it a little bit more easier to read and easier for a child to understand. You know what this garbage is right here? And they do that throughout the whole, they changed not one verse 
And this book right here lines up perfectly in this book right here. Yet it claims to be a King James Bible. You know what this does? It's a stepping stone to get kids and to get families. It's a stepping stone. Uh, I'll have put it right here because you can see it, right? Okay. It's a stepping stone to get kids and families from this absolute truth as, as silver tried in the fire seven times, the Word of God, absolute truth, to get them from this to get them to this. Oh, we changed it a little bit, but, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh, now we changed it even more. We're going to just take out rightly dividing. This is a stepping stone to this. Okay. But this is Christ. I understand King James isn't the word King James is not in the Holy Scriptures. It's where to find the Holy Scriptures. The word uh, authorized version is not in the uh, uh, the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, but it's where to find it. The Holy Bible is not the whole the word holy is, and we're gonna get into that. The word Bible is not in the Holy Scriptures, it's where you find the Holy Scriptures is the Holy Bible. And what you've got to be careful with today, today, is there's so many counterfeits. So many counterfeits. This is my oldest King James Bible. Okay. This leather is cracking. It's falling apart. It's on the outside. I mean, there's this thing that it was just originally authorized version, that's it. It was never Holy Bible, never King James. It was just authorized version. I don't know where they got that. I, I, I really don't. Okay. I've seen um, copies. Look up uh, exact copies of the original 1611 King James Bible authorized version, and you'll see it says Holy Bible in it. It says King James in it, and it says authorized version in it. It says all three. Why are they taking out the other two? And keeping one that's not even in the scriptures. Brothers says Christ, be careful. Check yourself. Here it says, The Holy Bible contained, contained the Old and New Testament, translated out of the original tongues, and with the former translations diligently compared and revised by His Majesty's special command, appointed to be read in churches, Cambridge of the University Press. And you open it up. And it starts with, The Most High, uh, to the Most High, High and mighty Prince James, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, defender of the faith. The translation of the Bible, Bible wish grace, mercy, and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it goes through and talks about the, the preface, the dedicatory, how we are poor instruments, the, the translators, we are poor instruments to translate God's word. Okay. But you see, there's Holy Bible. It says Holy Bible. The reason I believe we go hardcore on, uh, have to say Holy Bible, the King James Version, authorized version, is that came along after they realized there's so many Bible perversions out there trying to compete. And we're like, okay, when we say the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible, well, this one also says the Holy Bible. We had to start saying the King James Bible, Holy Bible. Well, now this one comes along, King James Holy, it doesn't say Holy Bible, but King James Bible. And sometimes they'll say King James Holy Bible. But is it a King James Holy Bible? Okay. Then they had to add authorized version, but all of it was there in the beginning. But we really pushed this. But there's Christ, there's nothing wrong with saying King James Bible, Holy Bible, authorized version. Why are brethren fighting over this? Why are brethren fighting over this? Okay. I don't want this near the Bible perversions. And I lost a piece of the leather. It's an old book. Doesn't get taken out much. Uh, this is one I, I read a lot. Um, remember, this is just a piece of paper. This is just a piece of paper and just some leather, and it's fall, that's all it is. It's the words that matter that's in. Like I said, this is just a King James Bible. It's um, just a Holy Bible, authorized version. But what matters is the words that are in it that we're hiding here. These books deteriorate over time. These books fall apart. We need to make sure we're hiding God's word here in our hearts. Amen.
We talk about the Bible, prefer, uh, the, Bi the word Bible equals the book. That's what it means. The Bible, the Bible means it's the book. The book above all books. The most important, most prized possession someone can have on this earth today is the King James Bible. The authorized version, the Holy Bible. Why? Because in this is the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. We're going to get into it some more. The will of God, the commandments of God. Okay? The words of eternal life. That's all Bible means is the book. Collection of books. Why use the word holy in front of the word Bible? The book. Because this is the holy book. This isn't. Now what brought this on is I heard a brother in Christ that I love and care about. He said that these uh, Bible versions say Holy Bible, and they're holy. But they're not, they're not uh, God's Word, and they're not holy according to God. Uh, no, these aren't holy, period. And we're, I'm going to prove that through God's Word. This book right here that says Holy Bible, the American Revised Standard, is not holy. This is the commandments of men, the doctrines of men. The Bible condemns that. That's the whole point. We're getting into this little study here, or else the video would end right here. Remember, it's just location. Don't argue over it. Okay. But someone brought up that point, and it really pricked my heart, and I really wanted to do this for you, brothers and sisters. Why use the word holy in front of the word Bible and Scripture? Because actually in here it says Holy Scripture. But we say Holy Bible. It's the book that's holy. What does it mean to be holy? You want to know what's worth fighting for? Are you going to fight me for using the word Bible and King James Version? Uh, Holy Bible, the authorized version, King James. Okay. Or are you going to fight for things like when you see someone misuse holy and say that these are holy and slip up and ask, I probably didn't mean it, but he says these say they're holy, they're holy, but they're just not according to God. No, they're not holy, period. Okay. They're not holy at all. Romans 1 2 reads, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So, Scriptures is in the King James Bible. Holy Bible, authorized version. Okay. I just want to put that verse out there to show that the word Holy Scriptures is in there. Scriptures is in there a lot, but there's a few times where it'll actually say Holy Scriptures. Okay. 1 Peter 1.16 reads, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is, the, this is what, why you have holy in front of the word Bible. Why you have holy in front of the word scripture that's in the Bible. Okay. I'm just going to start reading these because we've got to get through it fast. There's a lot here. And I don't want this to be like a two-hour study. So if you want to pause and turn, make sure you get out your King James Bibles for English-speaking people. King James Bibles. Okay. But 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it says, For it is written. I mean, someone else wrote, wrote God's word down? Absolutely. You go to the Old Testament in Leviticus 27, it says, Sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. Therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Okay, for be holy, for I am holy. Give me a second. Leviticus 20, 26 says, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have served you from other people, that ye should be mine. But for I the Lord am holy. Okay. But I found the verse in Leviticus 27 that says, Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. The Lord your God is holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. Remember what it says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Where do we find God's word? In a book. Not just a book. Not just a book, not just a book, but the book. And what do we do with those words? The 
the Holy Bible. We hide them in our heart. Remember, these books can fall apart. We can be thrown into prison where we don't have these books. That's why it's so important to have these words sown in our hearts. Sanctify yourself. How can we sanctify ourselves? By having the Word of God hiding in our heart and living it. That's what it means to be holy. That's why this is called the Holy Bible. Holy is the will of God and, the com and also the commandments of God. That's what it means to be holy. Okay. Sometimes holy means perfect, but for us, it's not about us being po perfect. God is perfect. It's saying that, be holy for I am holy. Obey my commands. Do the will of God, creator of all things. Where do you find that, the will of God? Where do you find his commandments? His commandments. In the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Where's the Holy Scriptures found? In the Bible. This was never an ar a big argument, but today it is. Uh, Luke 2.40. Turn to Luke 2.40. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. I'm going to read through. And the child grew, this is talking about Jesus Christ, and the child grew and racked strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew of it, knew not of it. But they supposed him to have been in the company went, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, capital S, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Remember, it's his mom saying that, Behold thy father. It's not his father. I sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? The will of God? Remember, God the Father, the soul, is in Jesus Christ. We're going to get to the verse. What Jesus does, it's God the Father doing. When Jesus is speaking, it's God the Father speaking. And they understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He must be about my father's business. John 5, 17 reads, But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. You just see Jesus doing the work. But Jesus is like, My father worketh, and hitherto I work. My father worketh hitherto, and I work. He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 10, 37 reads, If I do not the work of my Father, believe me not. Okay, There's going to be a lot of antichrists, false Jesuses that don't line up with God of the King James Bible. Okay, believe me not. Okay, the will of God. That's how we got this book here to tell us the difference between true and false. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they have gone. Because many false uh, prophets have gone out into the world. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. Junk over here. But you see there, uh, John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Comma, he does doeth the works. When Jesus is speaking, it's God the Father speaking through him, and it's God's will that's being done through Jesus Christ. He's following 
and setting the example for us. How we know this, keep going. Um, here it is, how can you live a life of Christ without the words of God living in you? Once again, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Jesus is supposed to be where? Here. That's why we always get on to people. I get attacked a lot because there's a lot of head belief and there's a lot of fakes and frauds. And I take them and I line them up with the scriptures. And they don't line up to the scriptures. Matthew 7.21 we read, not... Matthew 7, 21. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. There it is, the will of God of, of my Father which is in heaven. Now remember, the kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. God's will, His Word, is going to be enforced in the day of the Lord, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. He's going to rule with the rod of iron. Okay? But it's the will of the Father that matters. Today, for a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, that's why I say Bible-believing, God-fearing, okay? Christian gets perverted a lot. There's nothing wrong with using the word Christian, but Christian is something you're supposed to be called. I don't call myself a Christian because it's something you're supposed to be called, not something that you claim for yourself. And it's been perverted so much. That's why I say Bible-believing, God-fearing. Man, where do you find the will of God today? Right here. Back in this day, you had God manifest in the flesh was speaking to them. It was the spoken word. You could have the spoken word. And remember, Jesus oftentimes said, it is written, it is written. He'd go back quoting God's words that are written down. But it was the spoken word and the written word. Today it's just the written word. We'll get to that here in a second. Matthew 21, 28 says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented. Had sorrow for what he said. And, dis and disobeying his father. And went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. Giving his father the answer he wants to hear. I go, sir. And went not. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, That the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Talking about the day of the Lord. The instruction righteous is here. Who did the true will of the Father? It's action. You take God's word, you hide him in your heart, and you live it. If your life, that's why I say, I get so much further. False converts get on me because I compare their life with God's will. Found in the book, the Bible. The holy scriptures, holy commandments of God, the will of God. Or do they line up with the will of God, with His commandments? Are they living a life of Christ? Are they a new creature in Christ Jesus? 2 Corinthians 13, 5 reads, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. How do we know that Jesus Christ is in you? By the life that you're living is the life that you're living lined up with the scriptures? Are you looking for that blessed hope? Or are you looking for the time of Jacob's trouble? Are you looking for Jesus Christ and have your eyes on Jesus Christ? Or do you have your eyes on the world? Some brethren have taken their eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. They're looking for the mark of the beast. They're looking for the um, uh, and uh, Antichrist. The, the beast himself. They're looking for the one world order. They're looking for hard times. Okay. Brother and sister Christ, are you ready for the catching away of the body of Christ? There's some brethren that are putting out teachings like, are you ready for the for hard times to come? Are you ready for two billion people to die? I know a brother in Christ that did that one. But my thing is, is are you ready for the catching away of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, with the life that you're living? We're going to get into that verse eventually. Right? But it says, examine yourselves, because you can be reprobates. 
false converts doing the will. Which one did the will of my father? Okay. Matthew 26, 39, we read, And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now people say, well, Jesus didn't want to die on the cross. Yes, he did. But why were we given this verse? Two things. Death on the cross was the only way to save mankind. That's what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, is there any other way? No, there isn't any other way. Then I'm doing it. Jesus said, then I'm doing it. That's the will of God. Okay? I'm getting ahead of myself again, but the will of God is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He doesn't want people to go to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Okay? wasn't created for mankind. He doesn't want people to go to hell. This was the only way to save mankind, provide a way into heaven for both the Old Testament and the New Testament saints. Remember, the Old Testament saints, were, their sins were just covered. They weren't taken away until Jesus died on the cross. Went down to Abraham's bosom, took the keys of, of hell. He has the authority now who goes to hell, who doesn't. And went over to uh, Abraham's bosom and led captivity Cap, captive, captivity captive, and led them free. The Old Testament saints went up, and a lot of Old Testament saints were resurrected when Jesus was resurrected. Right. It's the first part of the resurrection, a whole other study. And the second part is God's will that matters. Okay. That's what's being shown here. It's God's will that matters, and it was the only way. But God's will that matters. Where do we find God's will today? How am I even able to read this stuff to you? Right? The Holy Bible. What's Holy Bible? It's the book where we find the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. It's where we find the will of God for mankind. His creation. We find the Holy Commandments of God. Matthew 26, 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. If I have to do this, thy will be done. It's the only way. And God's will is what matters. Jesus is God, but this was done for our benefit. Okay? People say, why did Jesus pray? You can, you can talk, to, your body can talk to your, uh, your, your soul okay? and your spirit. We already talked about this in other studies about your um, conscience can bear witness with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit can bear witness with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's in you can bear witness with the Spirit and Holy Spirit that's in another brother and sister in Christ. Okay. But this was done this way to let us know that it was the only way, and it's God's will that matters. 2 Peter 3.9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's will, found in the scriptures, the Holy Bible. That's what word holy means. God's will, his, his will and his commandments. Okay? Here's, here's something I found out very interesting, Brothers Jesus Christ. Matthew 12, 50. Matthew 12, 50, we read, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Hmm. So whoever shall do the will of my Father in heaven? Mark 3, 35. A parallel passage. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. You know, when we say brother or sister in Christ, you know what that means when I say this is a brother or sister in Christ? It means it's a man or a woman doing the will of God the Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's one being between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Right? It's doing the will of God. That's what it means to be called a brother or sister in Christ. And there's some brethren that it's, 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 it's hard. And there's been times in my life where I wasn't setting a good example for what a real brother is in Christ. Right? It's someone that does the will of God the Father. 
Is this in your heart and you're living it? Then you're shining and you're screaming, I'm a brother in Christ. When you're worldly, when you're going off this junk over here and you're just so worldly, even there's some worldly false converts that try to use this and hide behind this, but they don't really care about God's word because they're not taking his word and hiding it in their heart. But predominantly the world loves this junk over here. The Bible perversions. Okay. They're not doing the will of the Father. They scream, I'm lost and hell-bound by their actions and the life they live and their stands. False doctrine and everything. I'm on my way to hell is what they're screaming. They're not screaming, I'm a brother or sister in Christ. Brother and sister in Christ, prove your own selves. Know your own selves lest you be reprobates. Are you doing the will of God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord? The first command he gives is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're going to get to that again. But first, you don't have to turn here, but 1 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, 2 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, uh, Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, we read it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sothenus, our brother, through the will of God. Paul is called to be an apostle through Jesus Christ through the will of God. He says it again in 2 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by what? The will of God. Not the will of man, but the will of God. Remember, back then, when this was being written down, and this was being tabulated, if you want to say, put together, it was the spoken word, and the Old Testament was the written word. Okay. There was a time when God's word was spoken and written down. Jesus quoting the Old Testament, we talked about that, and he also spoke. He had the words of this life. Remember when the, uh, the apostles left him when he tried to explain uh, the true, the, his flesh and his blood, and all his disciples left him, and the twelve apostles are sitting there, and he's like, will you leave me also? And they said, where will we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. The spoken word. God manifest in the flesh. His word was God's word. Okay. You had prophets that spake by the Holy Ghost. You're not to take this as the words of men, but as in truth it is the words of God that effectually worketh also in you that believe. You're not supposed to take this as the words of, of men, but as the words of God. They were spoke, men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But today when someone says, Thus saith the Lord, we say, chapter and verse. There's no new revelation today. The book, the book, is complete. It's finished. The book, the King James Bible, is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. And if what you're doing, and you're claiming, I'm doing this for Jesus Christ, if it doesn't line up with the scriptures, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay? It's that simple. But this is our foundation in all matters of faith and practice. Remember, holy, I'll say it again, holy equals the will of God, commandments of God. Okay, there's ten commandments right here that come from the, God's word. Know how you can take things from here and you can put them on posters. Right here, Psalms 121. Okay, I don't worship this book. I, I take the words as God's perfect written word. It's his will, it's his commandments, and you hide them here. And you can put them on stuff all around you to help remind you. Refresh the Word of God that's in your heart. Right. That's why we have the book, the King James Bible, so we can know the will of our Creator, God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. How we know the will of our Creator? Through the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus is the one that created all things. But through the Holy Spirit's, Remember, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Jesus talks about the Comforter coming in. And the Holy Spirit comes in and guides you into all truth. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and braveth not, and it shall be given to him. You want to know truth? Ask God to open this book to you. I don't understand everything completely in this book, top to bottom, yet. And I'm pretty sure that by the time I either get caught up in death, or get caught up in the catchway of the body of Christ, someday we're going to have, the Bible talks about having the mind of Christ. We are going to know this book top to bottom. 
No more questions. No more confusion. No more debates. No more arguing. We're going to know this. We're all going to be unified. One, we're going to be striving together like we're supposed to be down here. We're definitely going to be doing it when we get up there, brother, sister, Christ. Okay? Holy. The Holy Bible. This is not holy. Fighting for the word holy and what it truly is, that's a fight worth fighting for like we're doing right now. But fighting over someone using the word Bible, King James, authorized version, it's, not, it's words to no profit. It's just going to distract you from fighting things like what true holiness is. What it means to be holy. Okay? It means doing the will of God the Father. Hiding God's word in your heart and living it. Doing the will of God. Obeying his commands. I remember, it's not in my notes, but I remember um, Moses in the Old Testament. Uh, not Moses. It was, um, please forgive me, uh, Samuel with Saul. When Saul's like, we've got all these animals. We're, we kept them. And they were commanded to kill all the animals. Kill King Hagag. Kill, they're all evil and wicked. Wipe them all out. But they kept King Agag alive, and they kept the best of the animals and spoiled them. They didn't obey the commandments of God. And Samuel comes to him and says, what is this? He, said, he comes to him and says, why hasn't you kept the commandments of God? And he's like, I have kept the commandments of God. And he's like, what is the bleeding of these sheep I hear in my ears? Oh, oh, we, kept, we kept, well, you see, we, we kept all these to offer to, to your God, not our God, to your God. It's a sacrifice. And Samuel's like, what do you think God cares more about? Sacrifice or keeping the commandments of God? And I'm paraphrasing. Do you think God wants your gifts or does he want your obedience? He wants your obedience. He wants people to get saved. He wants people to live a life of Christ. He wants you, people to have a personal relationship with him. All right. the, the commandments of God are so important. But where do we find those commandments? In the book. I keep saying the book because that's what Bible is. The book. The book above all books. The book that has God's perfect written word in it. The Bible. Salvation. Remember 2 Peter 3, 9 we read earlier. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises and some men count slackness. But is long suffering towards us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Remember 2 Thessalonians 1 8 reads, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a command of God to obey the gospel. Why? Because his will is that none should perish. He doesn't want people going to hell. But there's lots of people going just pouring into hell. Why? Because the true plan of salvation is repentance towards God. Okay? Repentance towards God. And repentance in here is having sorrow for your... Per when it applies to salvation, having sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against God. You come to the cross and you throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. I'm a wicked sinner. Dirty, round, dirty rotten, low down, no good sinner on my way to hell. And I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you, Lord. I am so sorry, Lord. What can I do? I, I, there's nothing I can do. There's some people that have tried everything. There's nothing I can do. I, I'm still this wicked, vile sinner on my way to hell. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried, I'm still a wicked, dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinner on my way to hell. Lord, what can I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Remember what Jesus said. Okay? He said, there's no greater love than this, than a man give his life for his friend. Jesus gave his life for us at the cross. We're supposed to give our life to him at the cross. The old man is dead and buried. The old man is dead and buried. The new man is raised. How do we know that? Because that verse, people like to stop there. There's no greater love than this, than the man laid down his life for his friends. And they stop. But they don't keep reading. Jesus said, Ye are my friends if 
is a Bible if. You do whatsoever I command you. The old man is dead and buried. That's your love for Jesus Christ. That you give the old man to Jesus Christ at the cross. You throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. I didn't say you clean up your life and get saved. I said you throw your, your iniquities. I'm a sinner. And having sorrow for that sin. Sorrow is key to making repentance work. It's what leads to the changed life. God gives you a new life. He gives you a new life. He gives you the Holy Spirit. And He gives you His Word to hide in your heart. And live it. That way you can be close to Him. And you don't get deceived by this junk over here. You don't get deceived by the world. He's trying to protect you. He does it because He loves you, brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay. He knows how wicked this world is. He knows how deceptive this world is. That's why the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay. You believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. He said it is finished. Now I'm sealed into the day of redemption. Okay. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. That's the true plan of salvation. Okay. One thing that gets me is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. People keep leaving out how, did, how he died. They say how he died and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. They leave out how he died for our sins. They leave that part out a lot lately. I see that with a lot of people online claiming to be Bible believing. They're leaving out for our sins. Oh boy, they don't want repentance as a, in the salvation. They don't want to get truly saved and born again. They love this life. They love their sin. They are sorry for their sin. Okay. God's willing is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I got into it with somebody because I said, you won't find true plan of salvation here. Repentance over here is going from unbelief to belief. Repentance over here is just stating the fact that you're a sinner. Yeah, you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners. Oh well. But where's the sorrow for sin? It's not here. It's been taken out of these. You don't have to be sorry for your sin. In fact, you can keep your sin. You know, you can get saved and have the world too. And this junk over here. Over here, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. God's love will not shine through you, brother, says Christ. If you start falling for loving the world, brethren can fall away and start loving things in the world more than they love God. It's called covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.9 reads, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. The will of God is none should perish. Holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose of grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now stop. This is what people try to get you confused on, brothers and sisters. Notice how it said, not of works. Remember what I just said salvation was? You come to the cross broken saying, I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low now, no good sinner. There's nothing I can do to get saved. There's nothing I can do to earn heaven. I've tried this. I've tried that. Nothing works. I'm still a dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinner on my way to hell. And you turn to the cross. You turn to Jesus Christ. His blood washes your sins away. Cleanses us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. There is no sin. There'll be another study we'll be doing later. There's a, there is no sin today that's unpardonable. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right. But when we say that there's a changed life after salvation, God says, here's the Holy Spirit, and here's my word. The Holy Spirit will open the word of God to you and teach you how to live for Jesus Christ today and be a shining light for him to this lost world. They say, well, that's works. You're trying to say we have to earn salvation. That's not what we're talking about at all. They know it. They just don't want to come to the cross sorry for their sins. They, will, they love their sins. They love the life that they're living. 
they don't want, they don't love Jesus Christ. Because if they love Jesus Christ, they would give their life for him at the cross. The old man is dead and buried. No, no, I'm, I, that old man's got to stay alive. I'm not going to die for you, Lord, but I'm, I'm going to try to take advantage of you dying for me. Oh, boy. But they read this and say, not according to works. Absolutely. There's nothing I could do to earn salvation. But now that I'm saved, the Bible says that you are bought with a price. You are not your own. God says, um, feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. We read a verse about Paul saying, prove your own selves. We belong to God. He owns us. He gives us commands. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will come unto him and will make our abode with him. And we read the verse about, ye are my friends, if, uh, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. We spoke, I said that verse. We didn't read it, but I said it. Time and time again. Okay? The changed life, new creature in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. How do we live a life of Christ? How do we know how to live a life of Christ? Right here, the will of God, his commandments. Titus 1 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, cannot lie, promised before the world began. Remember we read about Jesus Christ. Take this cup from me. That's what this was proven. It wasn't that Jesus didn't want to die on the cross for us. He did. It's God manifest the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. God wanted to provide a way for us to go to heaven. And he provided that way from day one. Before the world began. This was all set up. In the book called the King James Bible, the authorized version, our precious promises, the will of God for us. The blessed hope. Okay. The changed life. We read that 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. John 17.17. 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Psalms 119.11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. How can you sanctify them through thy truth? If we don't have God's word, it says thy word is truth. God's word, God's will, God's holy commands. That's what holy is, brothers and Christ. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3.14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. That's why we say this is our final authority, brothers and Christ. Remember when Paul was walking, it was spoken word as well as the written word. But today, it's the written word. This is your foundation. We sometimes forget where we have learned things, and we start getting deceived by the world, or starting to go into the world's way of looking at things. You know, we have brethren that have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. They've taken their eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on this world. They've forgotten whom thou hast learned them. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus, the Holy Scripture, remember what the Bible says, God's laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Okay? It also talks about how in nature we can see that God exists. That we're created. Okay? This all didn't happen by accident. 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All Scripture. The will of God. His commandments. And what does it do? It leads a man to be perfect in God's eyes. If you hide God's word in your heart and you desire to live right and you're doing your best to live right and do right, this allows you to have good works. That's why these false converts get onto me, because I look at their works, they're reprobate. They're bad works. They don't line up with the scriptures. Okay? Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And remember, it's the perfect heart that God's looking at. I still sin sometimes. But I'm telling you right now, I'm still a sinner saved, I'm a sinner saved by God's grace. But I'm not that filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. I'm not as bad as that man was. That old man's dead and buried at the cross. I gave that life to Jesus Christ on the cross. And he's given me a new life. He has given me authority and power to overcome sin in my life. To put down this body of flesh. 
I'm not as wicked as a man as I once was. I still have sin in my life. I still struggle. But I'm not, as that, I'm not that man anymore. People saw a change. My family members saw a change. Okay. People around me see, hey, that man ain't like us. But they don't say it in a good way. They say it in a bad way, mostly. Okay. But the man of God may be perfect, perfect, truly furnished into all good works. And it's through God's word that that's possible. It's only through God's word. It's not talking about sinless perfection. It's talking about having a perfect heart before the Lord. Heartfelt desire. That my heartfelt desire before was of the flesh. And worldliness and sin. And doing things the world's way. Now my heartfelt desire is for God's word. And doing things God's way. It's a big difference. Okay. There's major doctrines in the Word of God that lets us know God's will and precious promises. One of them is Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I always throw that in there because people are like, We don't need the Bible to believe and get saved. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may have, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Yes, we needed a perfect written record to be able to believe in Jesus Christ. Okay. Titus 2 1. Turn to Titus 2 1. Come on. But speak thou the things which becometh sound doctrine. How can you speak things that are sound doctrine if you don't have the will of God in your hands and in your heart? It's in your hands first, and you hide it in your heart. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in the faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, the will of God. Not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You mean when the women become with holiness, when the women aren't following the boundaries that God set? And obeying God's commands and obeying the will of God becometh holiness. They cause the word of God to be blasphemed. Chase, when they're, those things that are listed out there is the will of God. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, to be chaste, to be keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands. That's eight things that the Word of God may, be blasphemed, not, may not be blasphemed. Hopefully I counted that right. Eight things. If it is, eight's number of completion of new beginning. Seven's number of completion. Eight's number of new beginning. The old woman wouldn't want to do this. I don't want to go off on a new study, uh, new, uh, on a different area like a rabbit trail. But holiness, okay? The Word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. And all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. This is where we find out how to do good works. We just read that. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. A pattern of good works. And doctrine showing uncorruptness. Where do we get our doctrine? From the book. The Holy Bible. Holy. The whole point of this is what does holy mean? The will of God. His commandments. And doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Remember, holy can't mean perfect. But for us, when it says, be ye holy for I am holy, it's talking about the will of God and his commandments. And all things showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. i got another study I'm working on here about in meekness, uh, 
correcting those in, in meekness, instructing those that impose themselves. Some brethren have forgotten that. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Okay, and we'll get that in another study, but I just want to just mention it here a little bit. Be careful, brothers that are in ministry, that you use sound speech that cannot be condemned. If you're speaking through bitterness, out of anger towards the wrong person, like if I'm angry at, let's say, this guy named John, and I'm talking to the body of Christ to warn him about this guy John, I can be angry at John with a cause. False, let's say he's a false convert, false preacher, wolf in sheep's clothing, but I'm addressing the body of Christ. Why does it sound like I'm angry at the body of Christ and yelling at the body of Christ? you got to be careful, okay? Sound speech that cannot be condemned, and that, that he that is of a contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you, exhorts, exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things, in the life they're living. Okay? Someone told me that, well, they don't have to believe in the major doctrines. I'm putting together another study on that, too. We don't have to believe in the major doctrines to be saved, or as evidence of salvation. You don't, okay? Not, all the doctrines, the major doctrines, link back to the gospel and, the, and link back to fruits, living your life, okay? The doctrines, okay? If you truly believe in that blessed hope, not just in words, because I know some brethren that believe it in words, but in deeds, they deny it. They've gotten distracted by this world. They're all about prepping, and, and we got to go through seven years of the time of Gentiles' trouble, and we have to endure to, before the time of Jacob's trouble starts, and we've got to endure to the end to be caught up and everything. It's like, uh, no, if you truly believe in the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to live a life that's looking, present tense, we're going to read that verse, looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. This is how you look for that blessed hope. You're living a life of Christ clear to the end. You're living for Jesus Christ, and you take His Word, His will, holiness, His holy commands, the Holy Scriptures found where? In the book called the Holy Bible, the King James Bible for English-speaking people. You hide it in your heart and you live it to the very end. When you look up and say, Good Lord, you could come back today. Am I ready? Do I still have some sanctification I've got to do? Am I not? Is there some things here I need to work on that I'm failing you with what we were just reading right there? Not purloining, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. They're living it. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Okay? When the fire, fire started coming through here, I had to evacuate the house, and I had to go to the Go Beach and stay at a, a, they opened up a school, I think it was a grade school, that I was sleeping on a cot in the gym, because we had to evacuate, fire was four, it was eight, well, first it was eight miles, and then one day it went four miles, and got four miles closer to the house, and that was only four miles away, and praise the Lord, it didn't come through here, but when I was there, the doctrines of men, I knew that I'm, eternal security, I'm sealed into the day of redemption. I'm looking for that blessed hope. Jesus could call me home in death at any time now, or he could call me home in life, the catching away of the body of Christ. And I remember the people there, they're looking at me saying, why aren't you scared? They're all, they were, a lot of the people were scared of losing their homes, and it's like the end of the world. Everything's the end of the world to them. One of them saw all the, uh, all the highlighting and me watching Bible studies and thought I was a pastor in the Babel building. And I, I, I got to witness to some people. I even got interviewed. I don't know if I ever made it to, to the news media, but I got interviewed. Well, why are you so calm? Because I trust the Lord, my Savior. He knows what he's doing. Okay. If it's my time to lose the house, it's my time to lose the house. God will provide. That doctrine of trusting God, okay, through eternal security, through the blessed hope, this isn't it. My rewards are up there, not down here. My real life someday? This is just, you know, a life that you're living before your real life sometimes you think of that. 
It's like, my real life's up there with the Lord Jesus Christ, and someday I'm going to get to live that life. But right now, I'm down here because this is where God wants me. And if this is where God wants me, I need to trust Him. And sometimes I have a hard time. Okay. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. That we den teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, teaching us the will of God, holiness, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, before the catching away of the body of Christ. Oh no, I can have the world, this false teaching of easy believism and everything, take repentance out, no changed life after salvation. I can have the world and be saved. Well, it says here in this pre present world, there's going to be a change. you got to start living for the Lord today. Not when you get when you get to go to heaven, because they think they got a free pass in their wallet. They think they got a great card in their wallet. See, it says, I believed. Therefore, I get to go to heaven, and I got a free pass, and I can live however I want. Oh, no, no, no. They're up, they're up for a rude awakening. Okay. And remember, it says, For the grace of God bringing salvation hath appeared unto all men. Remember, we said that God's will is that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, it's an action. Everything we just read there, it's an action. I've said it before, I've said it again, it's an action. We get it from the book. This book is what tells us how to live a life of Christ and prepare ourselves for that catching away of the body of Christ. We don't know when it is. And he said, some brethren have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, and now they believe we're going to be here another five, six, can, can I see seven? Do I hear seven? Do I hear seven? Okay, seven years. And we're going to go through some tribulation in that seven years. And it's going to be the time, like I said, the time of Gentiles trouble. It's like, we're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope every day. You're supposed to be loving it every day for Jesus Christ. Okay. Are you ready for the catching away of the body of Christ? Are you looking for it? That's what we should be asking. Not, are, are you ready for the economy to collapse? Are you ready for a famine to show up? It could happen. Are you ready for, a, that's not what we're supposed to be saying. We're supposed to be saying, are you ready for the catch away of the body of Christ? Are you living for Jesus Christ today? Do you trust him? Now, I keep saying this, a little side note, I keep saying this. I'm not a prepper. I'll never be a prepper. I have enough food in there that might last a year, two years. But I usually do just a year's worth of food. But some of that canning process, if I'm blessed, maybe it'll last two years. Okay? But if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. But we're supposed to re reap in due season. Okay? A harvest. You reap and you start storing for that winter and to get through the whole next year until it's harvest time. So there's nothing wrong with storing food. I'm not against that. What I'm against is you prepping, planning to go through such hard times, acting like, you, and saying, I, I'm not going through the time of Jacob's trouble, but acting like you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble with your actions. Gonna go through such hard times that we gotta prep, 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 and hide and isolate ourselves and hide. What did you just say about a candle? You don't hide it under a bushel. You set it atop for the world to see. We're not supposed to be running for the hills and prepping and everything. We're supposed to be standing up and standing for the Lord and living for the Lord until He kills us and brings us home. That's what I mean by being caught up in death. Or he catches us up in the catching away of the body of Christ. We're to be a light and live for him, clear to the end. Okay. And I know some people might give me thumbs down and give me slack for that, but I'm sorry, but that's what the Word of God says. This is how we're supposed to live, looking for that blessed hope. <coughs> okay. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I'm looking forward to that day. I look at my life and say, Lord, have I let anything back in? Sometimes you can get stuff out, brothers and sisters Christ, and without no, you know it, I can't say without knowing it, but it likes to slowly creep back in. And you're like, Lord, how, Lord, I'm so sorry I chose this. I let it back in. Get it back out, Lord. That's why it's a day-to-day -day process. That's why I say deny it. You must, that's why Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny himself and pick up his cross daily 
and follow me. Daily. It's a day-to-day -day thing. It's every day. Lord, i got to check my life. Okay, today's great. So then tomorrow I don't have to check? Oh, no, no, no. I still have to check tomorrow. And the next day. And the next day after that. All these things. Am I ready for you? Have I let any of these things come back in? Is there some of these things that I'm holding on to and I won't let go of? Covetousness, which is idolatry. Zealous of good works. I'm looking forward to that day. Have the mind of Christ. We're all striving together. We're all one. No false converts. No more debating. No more division. You know, the number one person who causes division in the body of Christ, brothers and Christ, people who don't want to let go of, of worldliness, sin. Okay. That's the biggest thing that I've seen. Okay. And one spirit that I see going around in the body of Christ, just as a warning, is the spirit of drama. Almost, I don't know if it's an evil spirit, but if there's one like that. But it just seems like there's this evil spirit that goes around and it's causing people to just argue and to debate and drama. There are things worth fighting for. What, what are we fighting for right now in this Bible study? What true holiness is. This garbage over here is not true holiness. It's not holy Bible. It's a satanic counterfeit. It's not even the Bible. It's a satanic counterfeit. Because the Bible means the book. Book that's a collection of books, but it's the book above all books. That's not what this is. It's garbage. It's going to get burned. Verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. There's some brethren that have despised me because I stood up to their sin. They're, they're idols. I kicked their false gods, their idols, and their sins. And they despise me for it. I've kicked a brother in Christ for turning his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And ever since he turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, he just seems to be going, just his eyes are on the world. Brothers, this is Christ. I don't want to go into that. But brothers, this is Christ. Please keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Keep hiding his word in your heart and living it every day. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. How can we be shown a mystery if we don't have God's perfect written word? His will. His promise. This is a promise. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment and a twinkle of an eye at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's what I'm looking forward to, brothers of Christ. That's where my eyes are at. That blessed hope. Jesus Christ. Seeing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll do a little bit of a rabbit trail. I got into it with a post-tribber that said, couldn't understand that there was two comings of Jesus Christ. There's one where he comes in the clouds. He doesn't touch down. He comes in the clouds and he calls us home. Are there any angels with him? No. When we read this passage, no angels are with him. It's just Jesus Christ himself. And he calls us home. And then there's the second time he actually comes with the angels and comes down on a white horse and touches down. One time it's just Jesus himself standing there. Call in the clouds, calling us home. Second time, he comes down with a horse, and there's angels. There's two different times. A little rabbit trail. But I look. this is the day I'm looking forward to with the life I'm living. I'm trying to please God every day. I'm trying to live for Him every day. Put this flesh down. It's not always easy. Putting this flesh down, having to deal with this wicked world, deal with the body of Christ in the state that it's in right now, which is not a good state. It just seems like there's so much division. It's like every, men in ministry, it's like every man for themselves. And the brethren, it's the thought of, I don't know, I, I still think the solution, if we truly are going to have some hard times, which we might, before the catching away of the body of Christ, the solution is house churches, not ranting and raving about what's going on in the world and prepping and everything. It's house churches coming together and working together and striving together through these tough times. Remember the two things that got Paul through the tough times. Now it doesn't have to do with the house church, but the two things that got Paul through the hardest times where he despaired of life and death, the blessed hope and prayer, the prayers of the brethren, knowing, hoping that someday I might be able to fellowship with you again. My heart's desire is to see you again, brothers and sisters in Christ. The prayers of the, of the, of the saints, the, the brothers and sisters in Christ. 
53. So in these last days, if we never get back to doing house churches, you want hope in these last days? The blessed hope? And praying for the brethren. I'm praying for you, brother Jesus Christ. Please pray for, pray for me. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Amen. And this mortal shall put on immortality. Once again, amen. This body of flesh is falling apart, and I'm, see, I'm realizing how old I'm getting. I know I'm not super old, but every year it seems like I'm, it's harder to get work done on this hillside. All right. But this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of... The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, these things have I written. That ye may know ye have eternal life. Ye are sealed into the day of redemption. This is the day of redemption. Precious promises. God's will is to redeem us and bring us all home someday. Either in death or in life at the catching away of the body of Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Everything we just read up there, be ye and here. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I got encouragement from brethren lately. Uh, there's times where I wonder if making these videos I get down, Satan, sorrowful, just sorrow seems to come in and, and it's starting to put, make me feel bad. I've got brethren turning on me. I've got, you know, had to put up with lost family members recently. I lost my daughter. Um, my ex-wife chose the world. Okay. Um, and like I said, I'm trying to do the work of the Lord. I'm trying to live for the Lord. And there's times where I'm like, Lord, am I really doing anything? Am I really helping the brethren? Am I being able to encourage you, brother, says Christ, in any way? And the brethren come in and say, I'm praying for you. Got an email where he said, I'm praying for you, brother. And, and, and talked about one of the videos that I did. There's some that are watching. Very few, but there are some that are watching. Praise the Lord. Okay. But notice it says here, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. When your work lines up with this book, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, it will never be in vain. It'll never be in vain. All right. It'll never be in vain. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. The Bible perver perversions are not holy Bibles. Like I said, that brother in Christ, he might have slipped up. I love that brother in Christ. This is just a brother, lovely correction. This book might say holy Bible, but it's not holy and it's not a Bible. It is not the book. It is not God's will does not show God's will or God's commandments. This is man. This is man corrupted, antichrist spirit. Okay, Second uh, Corinthians eleven four says, "For if he, Second Corinthians eleven four, let me get a break so you can pause it and turn there. Second Corinthians eleven four, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit." Antichrist spirit on this book, Antichrist, fake Jesus, is in this book. Receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him, and him is Satan. Remember, hell is created for the devil and his angels. This garbage over here is going to lead you to hell. Someone has to come along and preach the gospel out of the King James Bible. And when they do, you're going to get saved. The Holy Spirit's going to come in, and the Holy Spirit's going to say this. Get rid of it. It's garbage. This is God's perfect written word. And I have a testimony. I know a lot of brethren, brothers and sisters of Christ out there that have a testimony that they were using a Bible perversion. Someone came along and preached the gospel out of the King James Bible. Preached it. You can speak God's word, but it needs to line up with the scriptures. They preached the gospel out of this book, even though they had a Bible perversion. And after they got saved, God got this out of their life. And now they got them to the truth. And now there's change. This helps you live a life of Christ. Hiding God's word in your heart. 1 John 2.18 1 John 2.18 says, Little children, 
It is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. This has an Antichrist spirit, and it promotes an Antichrist as Jesus Christ. The Antichrist here is okay with sin. The real Jesus Christ has a zero tolerance for sin. This one doesn't. This one's okay with you having the world and claiming to be a Christian. This one says, be not conformed. This Jesus in this Bible doesn't want you to be conformed to this world. I've set you apart. You're supposed to be a light unto the world. You're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The ministry of reconciliation. Everything we read there about the changed life. The good works. All right. Now, defending the word holy, like we just did, that was a long video, if you're still with me, praise the Lord. Um, now, defending the word holy in the Bible, holy Bible, okay, the word holy, as it applies to the word Bible and to the word scriptures and how it's supposed to apply to us, be ye holy for I am holy. This book right here, fight, that's worth fighting for, what true holiness is. That's worth fighting for and correcting brethren on. But fighting over using the word Bible, using the word King James, two words King James, using the words authorized version, remember, as a location to where to find God's word. I've never said once that the word Bible is in the Holy Scriptures. I never said once King James Bible is in the Holy Scriptures. I never said once authorized version is in the, is in the Holy Scriptures. It's where you find the Holy Scriptures. Location, location, location. But some brethren would rather fight over that than fight for good things, like holy, what true holiness is. Fighting for the true plan of salvation, the, go uh, the gospel, fighting for the major doctrines, eternal security, um, dispensational teaching, um, Godhead, uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, 2 Timothy 2.14 says that these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. And you got to watch yourself because when you say the King James Bible, it's being sarcastic. When I see brethren doing that, uh, sarcasm is not the way to go. The King James Bible. Bible. I can see doing this when I say this claims to be a Bible, but it's not a Bible. But if you're referring to God's perfect written word, watch out. Ease, ease off the sarcasm. You shouldn't be doing this when it comes to saying King James Bible authorized version. Okay. Like, it's not really that. Yes, it is. That's where you find God's perfect written word. And the book, the book, collection of books in one book, and it's a book that's above all books. It's the book. Remember what the Bible says? No one can say that, say that thou art the Lord, except by the Holy Ghost. The Lord is definitive, meaning there's only one capital L Lord. Only one. The Bible is supposed to be definitive, saying the book, there's only one book. But today there's a lot of perversions out there. We have to be sober, we have to be vigilant. Remember, our adversary devil going around like a warring lion, seeking who he may devour. He used Bible perversions to do it. He uses wolves in sheep's clothing to do it. He uses worldliness to do it. He tries to use your own flesh against you to do it. Be sober, be vigilant. How do you do that? By taking God's word and hiding it in your heart. And living it. Living the major doctrines, living the instruction in righteousness, taking this word, word of God, hiding it in your heart, and living for Jesus Christ, looking for that blessed hope every day. Every day. All right. But not striving about towards to no profit, but about the hurting of the ears, uh, hears. Words to no profit. Matthew 23, 4. Or Matthew 23, 24. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and swallow a camel. When you start straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel, and I've done it, I've done it. I start getting into an argument, and someone's like, "Is it really that important? Is that really worth fighting over?" And you start getting into an argument that turns into a debate. Remember, we're not supposed to debate, but it does tend to turn into debate. Sometimes, if you argue long enough, it'll always turn into a debate. 
Uh, you have discussion, you can start disagreeing, but you're trying to make your points and you're showing your sides. But most of the time when it starts turning into a hardcore argument, it's going to wind up turning into a debate. And there's some things it's like, is that really worth fighting over? And I've fallen for it. I've made the mistake of fighting for things that aren't worth fighting over. I'm telling you right now, the word using the word Bible correctly, Holy Bible, King James Bible, uh, author, the authorized version, it's not worth fighting over. Jesus Christ, it's not worth fighting over. Let's get back to fighting for things that are worth fighting for. Okay? So words to no profit. Fighting over the word Bible, question mark? Eh, it's not worth fighting over. Holiness? That's worth fighting for. The plan of salvation, the true plan of salvation, that's worth fighting for. My Savior Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, or compared to this Antichrist junk over here, that's worth fighting for. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please, please, please take this as a loving correction if you're one of the people that's starting to get into it. You want to fight, you want to fight, I want to fight for the Lord, I want to fight for the Lord, that is a good thing. I want to fight for the Lord. But make sure you're doing it in a good way. Not striving about words to no profit. Not straining at a gnat trying to swallow a camel. Okay? Not setting a bad example for the body of Christ and for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And how you go about it. That will be in another study about how we correct people. Okay? We're not doing it right lately. It just seems like we're just being prideful, arrogant, ego, um, bitterness. You know, mainly pride. Just... You know, sarcasm is not the way. Name calling is not the way. Okay, mocking is not the way. Okay. So I'm going to end this right here. Brothers and Christ, I love you in Christ Jesus. And I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Um, the heat's coming. It's getting super. It's, getting, it's 90 degrees on my deck right now. And this is just it's supposed to be, it's normally 80 out there. But on the deck, it's always like 10 degrees hotter. So once it hits 90 out there, it's going to be 100 on my deck. Um, but it's starting to get hot, and I'm trying to get a lot of work done. Please pray for me. I'm praying for you, brother, sister, Christ, and I'm trying to encourage you to keep looking for that blessed hope. And this Bible tells us how to look for that blessed hope, present tense, how to live a life of Christ. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Get back out there and get back to living for the Lord every day. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. I'll see you in the next video.